Photoshop just released some big, big Photoshop updates. So let's take a look at them. And to be able to access these new features inside of Photoshop, you need to have Photoshop beta. And to get the beta version of Photoshop, all you have to do is go into Creative Cloud and go over to, go over to beta. And here you will find Photoshop beta and you will be able to download it from here. And you don't have to worry because you can have both the Photoshop beta and the normal Photoshop version on your computer at the same time. But once you have downloaded it, you can open it up and we can create a new file. All right, so we are inside of Photoshop here. And the first feature that we are going to take a look at is the new implementation of Adobe Firefly inside of Photoshop. If you don't know what Firefly is, it is pretty much just uh, Adobe's own version of, let's say, Mid Journey or DALI. So just a text prompt to image uh, AI generator. So what Adobe has done is that they have taken their Adobe Firefly model and put it inside of Photoshop, which just means that now you can generate images from scratch inside of Photoshop. So now that we are in our project here, you can see that we have this generate image down here. You can either press this button here or on the left here in the toolbar at the bottom you also have the same generate image button but let's press this one and you will get this screen here and here you can type in a text prompt to for your image so let's do something like all right so we type our prompt here then you can choose content type you can choose if it's an art piece or a photo let's say we want a photo you can then also implement a reference image so if you have something that you want to reference, we can try that a little bit later. And you can also add some effects. So sort of the style that you want the image to be in. And if you press effects, you will see that you can choose between bokeh, digital art, hyper-realistic and all of these things, movements. And if you press reference images, it's sort of the same. You have them um, and these references here that are inside of Photoshop, but you can also upload your own. But let's leave it. Uh, blank for now and let's press it generate. So it's now going to generate a few options for you here It's going to take a few seconds But once you're done you will get an image here and you can just like before with the generative fill filter through different variations And just that is actually pretty cool But if you want to add some reference images, let's say you have an image that you want to reference Let's just press this button here and we will get the reference image tab Let's choose an image from our library. All right, let's use this image here as a reference image. And we can, if we want to change the prompt, we can do so. Otherwise, we can just press generate again and it is going to create three new versions once again. And as you can see, it totally changed the style of the image based on the references that we gave it. And you also see this blue little tick here. That just means that the images that we are looking at right now has an image reference when they were generated. And then if we want to add a style to the image, we can do that as well. We can just go in, uh, change the effects here. Let's do popular, bokeh effect, digital art. You can add as many as you want. Let's do hyperlist maybe. And let's try generating that. I mean, how cool is that? And this is all thanks to Adobe implementing their Adobe Firefly version three inside of Photoshop. So we can do this all inside of Photoshop. All right, and now we can take a look at the second new feature or update to a feature inside of Photoshop, and that is the generative fill. And now they've made an update that makes it a lot better. And as you probably already know, it was quite good already, but now it is using uh, the third version of the Adobe Firefly to generate the images. So if we go here and make a selection on this image, let's do a selection here, sort of like this, and let's write something like man walking towards the camera. And as you probably know, uh, Photoshop kind of struggled with generating images of humans or animals and stuff like that. But now in this version, I think it has gotten a lot better than it was before. And just by looking at the results that we got here, you can see that they are looking a lot better. There are actually faces, not just blobs. Yes, there are still some things that looks a bit wonky, but it is a lot better than it was before. But there's more to it. What you can do is that you can add references to your uh, generation here as well. So let's choose an image. We can choose this one here, put it into Photoshop and you can see the blue tick mark and we are going to press the generate once again. And now it's going to generate a new version, but with the reference in mind. And just like that, 
you can see that it picked up on a lot of things from the reference images. It picked up on his clothing, the pants, the colors of the clothes, his hairstyle, he had glasses on. But still, there are some wonky things with his face. And if you go through, yeah, all of them are a bit wonky. But you sort of get the point. You can now use references to influence how you want the generative field to work. And that is just super exciting because it just means that you will have more control over the things that you're going to be able to generate. But that's not it because there are still more things you can do. So let's pick one of the first uh, generations here. Let's say we like this one and we want some variations to this. If we go here to the right, you can see these three dots. If you press those, you can choose generate similar. And what that is going to do is that it is going to use what it just generated as the reference for generating similar versions of that. And as you can see, it's going to generate more options with a man walking towards the camera with a black coat and in a similar style. So just super cool new features. And if you have used the generative fill inside of Photoshop, then you might know that when you zoom into the area that you have generated, you can see that the quality isn't quite as good as your image around it. But now there is sort of a solution for that. You can't really change the settings of the and the quality of the generation. But what you can do is that you can upscale it. So it, once again, if you go here to the thumbnails, you can see on the left side of the three dots, there is this button here. And if you press that, and if you press that, you would be able to enhance the image, but doesn't seem to be able to work here when I have generated an image uh, or generated a background. All right, and now for the next new feature. So we have our image here. We can now remove the background just by pressing this button down here. And as you can see, it removes the background. And now that the background is gone, you can see that down here, the remove background button has disappeared from this menu, but instead there is generate background. So now we could generate a new background just by texting in a new prompt. So let's say I want busy street, let's say Barcelona. And just like that, you can generate new backgrounds for your images. And those were the new AI features inside of the new Photoshop beta. But before we end, there is one more feature that I want to share that is new, that doesn't really um, include any AI, but I think it's really cool. And that is that you now have the whole Adobe fonts uh, library available inside of Photoshop. But what you can do now is that if you go up and choose your font tab, you can see that you now have your fonts and more fonts. Your fonts are the fonts that you have downloaded and installed to your computer. But if you choose more fonts, it's all the fonts that are available on Adobe fonts. You can filter through all of the available fonts inside of Adobe fonts without having to go to the website, search through, look for your font and download it. You can do it all inside of Photoshop. So I think this is super cool. You can also see the preview. And when you find something you like, you can just press it and it is going to download it, install it to Photoshop and you can use it on all of your different Adobe softwares. So those were some new, really cool Adobe features. Uh, and if you want to try them out for yourself, just download Adobe Photoshop Beta. But I hope you enjoyed this video and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.